Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show. I am your host, the radio guy, the doctor, Mike Prince, coming to you each and every day, reminding you that you can follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. And of course, the website is obnradio.com. In the Prairie View community, check us out at 87.9 FM. And without any further ado, we'll jump right into today's episode. This man has come in, shook up the world. In Las Vegas, Nevada, shook up the MIAC, and now the gorilla is on his back. I'm presenting to some and introducing to others my friend, my brother, Coach Mike London. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing great, Mike. Thank you for having me again. Look forward to spending the season with you again about uh, what's going on here in, in Bison Land. So thank you for, for having me. Well, thank you, sir. And it is a pleasure and an honor to have you on board with us here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I just wanted to uh, get it out there now, man. You're not flying under the radar any longer right now. Uh, just had your MEAC Media Day Conference. They got you guys picked to finish second this year. How are you looking at that? Well, you know, um, obviously there's 20 people that had an opportunity to vote on that. So, um maybe it gives more insight of what maybe other people think about us or about the team. But to me, you know, not, I'm not downplaying that, you know, or causing that to be irrelevant, but at the end of the season, that's what matters more than anything else. I understand the preseason is important. It's what people think. But as I told our team, you know, we're still battling for uh, to gain the respect from a national perspective and from with our own conference. So it's nice to be acknowledged and, and recognized like that. But again, um, that doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean anything in terms of winning games and and the production and the execution that's needed for this season coming up. So um, and, and we're you know we were picked ninth last year. I mean, so we, we, we it, it doesn't matter to us. We just we still have to play uh, you know good football and 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 not get caught up with you know who's being acknowledged and who's who's ranked here and there because you got to play the games on the field. That's what we're looking forward to doing. Now, you guys go 7-4 and four on last season, and you had some extraordinary play by your quarterback, and I'm calling him Baby Newton. And, and huh. right okay. now, what is the key to preventing that sophomore jinx from coming in with your quarterback play? You know, Mike, I, one, you can't undervalue the fact that his – where his, his family DNA, where he comes from. I mean, there's a lot of conversations outside of what he and I have or, or the offensive coordinator, Brendan Marion, has with him, that he has a resource within his own family, particularly his brother, Cam. And there are some things that I'm sure they've talked about and discussed that he's seen up close, you know, firsthand uh, of how to how to maintain yourself being a consummate uh, uh, student and learner of the game. And the biggest thing for for Kalen to do was to to improve his football IQ. We signaled a lot of plays last year for him, and now his football IQ is such that now he can call plays at the line of scrimmage and make his checks, make the checks as well. So hopefully the the efficiency of how he's learned and improved his football IQ is going to allow him to play better, and uh, we're going to give him you know some opportunities to do that. So uh, he's a very humble you know young man and just wants to you know, just what cares about how the team does. And so when you have an attitude like that, a selfless attitude, then you're heading in the right direction. Well, you s- just spoke some volumes on the confidence that you have in this young man by allowing him to call his own plays. That is a rarity, especially in today's era. How did you develop to feel that confident in allowing him to do as such? And is there ever a time that you can override what the play decision or the formation would look like from sideline. Yeah, you know, he, he spent a lot of time with Brennan Marion, our, our offensive coordinator, who's also the quarterback coach. Um, we are an up-tempo team, and there are certain looks, and we'll make the signal in, and there are certain looks that we want to run a play. We, we do RPOs and all those things, run play-action passes. And there are certain looks that he knows just based on his football IQ, based on where the, where the, where the safeties are. Or tilted. I'm talking about one down too high. It's, it's, it's football jargon, but at the same time, when you learn those things, you've gone through it, then you learn the best practices or plays uh, against those particular looks. So that's where his, his strength and that's where he's learned 
and gotten better at as a as a player. And so he's also worked on the fundamentals of throwing. Completions are very important. Accuracy uh, is, is is critically important. And so you know you take the totality of, of a quarterback uh, commanding the game. He's gotten better at that. We're, we're by no means a finished product. We still you know there's still still things he's got to work on. Uh, but you know embracing the summer, uh, the spring and to where we are going into camp. Actually, our first practice is tomorrow, to tell you the truth, that we'll see all that uh, all that work and see if it comes to fruition. Okay, with all that coming to fruition and the, the season right at the brink of starting for 2018, it's amazing what seems like takes forever, but when it gets here, it's running so extremely fast that you can barely keep your head above water and keep breath with the pace. No doubt. And, you know, so at first you're the first, you know, group fall sport that's on the, on campus, nobody else is around. And it's, you know, slowly other people start coming, getting added to it, you know, other students. And then before you know it, you're, you know, uh, the guys are moving into their dorms and then the class, you know, the classes, you know, school starts March, uh, August 20th, you know, the first game is September 1st. So there's a lot of things that'll be going on, but right now it's just all football and training camp. And we're looking forward to, uh, you know, to see what our team looks like. Because every, every year there's a – the team has got to forge a new identity. You know, there's new leaders that step up. You know, there's new things that you find out about your guys. So that's that's what's important right now. And, you know, we, like we got uh, 90-something players on our team. 66 of them were either true freshmen that came in and had a large signing class, redshirt freshmen, true sophomores. And that's unbelievable. That's, that's a very young team that played in a lot of games – you know, uh, last year as far as experience, but it, it, at the same time, we're still very, very relatively young, but we look forward to, to competing. We're speaking right now with Coach Mike London of the Howard Bison of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, getting prepared for the 2018 season. Now, Coach, uh, you just made mention, you got 66 youngsters on your roster. Any newcomers that are standing out right now that you're bringing in with some great expectations? Well, I, you know, other than you know, the recruiting status, you know, we haven't had a practice yet. Like I said, our first one is tomorrow, but, um, on offense, you know, a young man named AJ Boyd, who had some FBS offers that, uh, chose Howard over the, over some schools. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's young men that, uh, that have been accomplished in the, in the classroom, but at the same time, you know, they, they've, they've had some success also on the football field. So we, like I said, we signed a large recruiting class, of, of young men that, you know, have done, done a nice job at their, you know, at their respective schools. And, and, um, you know, Jane Pierre is going to be a player who had FBS offers as well. That's a defensive lineman that uh, we're looking forward to watch him move around and run around and, you know, and all those good things. So our freshmen have gone through a summer transition, summer school. They've been here for a while. And now, you know, now we get a chance to see, you know, how they can complement our team, you know, cause they had, they do have the skill and ability. Okay, now, Coach, here's the, I guess, the the trick question for the day. You got 66 youngsters on your roster. You're coming off a great year of unexpectations from prior uh, assessments of the, the powers that be. Now you're coming in ranked pretty high. What is your mental approach and the mental challenge of, A, you keeping together as a coach, and, B, having your young men staying on grounded and rooted. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, last year the, the, the mantra was mission possible because we, we believe that people didn't think, you know, from what happened before in the previous years and the record up to this point. But, you know, we've adopted a similar philosophy, again, mission possible, and then we want more, you know. So those are the rallying cries. I mean, you know, you don't, you know, people are, are always watching to see what you do, how you react to certain things. And the mindset is we've, we've accomplished nothing at this point in terms of going into this season. You, you can't rely on, you know, your press clippings and your accolades and all that thing, like those things like that. They're not going to help you play this year. So uh, remaining grounded and, uh, yeah, and you know what, having young kids that have experienced some success and then want more of it, there's a hunger that um, I believe this team has, in, in that respect. But um, again, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. There's a lot of good teams. There's some games we won last play, last second, last minute. It, it very well could have went the other way. 
but um, you know we will continue to stay to stay focused on the task at hand for us. Well, staying focused is the key operative word to making sure that you have more successful days than failures on the football field. And that I'm talking about wins and losses. Now, coach, my final question for you on today, it might be another, might be a setup question. You never can tell coming from me. Uh, we know that you got Uh-oh. a, uh, <laughs> you know, you got a Houston base um, listening and following for Howard nation is a recognized brand throughout the nation. Is there any remote chance that there can be something worked out between Howard and Prairie View, possibly playing a home and home? That's a great question. And, um, and I, I do like the idea of an opportunity to do that. You know, this is, uh, we're playing Bethune Cookman in uh, the, the city classic up in Indianapolis. And I would, you know, the administrator, Kerry Davis, I mean, our athletic director, you know, I, we talked about doing something like that, you know, perhaps partnering and playing in a classic somewhere, whether it's in Houston, whether it's in Atlanta or wherever it might be. I, I just think that, you know, when you have opportunities to do that, then you put on a national scale and you see good coaches and you see good football. So um, that, that's something that we've always definitely discussed and talked about. And, and hopefully it, that comes to fruition as well, because there's some really good teams, you know, that are in the SWAC and, you know, it, it, that play H, you know, HBCU football, and we'd like to be able to 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 play you know marquee games and, and get visibility, you know, not only to Howard but also to other teams that we play. And, and but that's that's something we're definitely interested in doing. Well, I just want to let you know, my friend, there has been a poll yeah. taken here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and PV Nation would love to see that opportunity arise if it ever comes to fruition. Wow, great! All right, I support that. Yes, sir. Well, we support it as well. We support you, my friend. And as always, we're going to give you some final thoughts and comments as we get ready to shut today's segment down. Well, you know, it's one of those things that when we're just talking to the players uh, about if you don't make an impact with your with your presence, then, um, you know, you won't make an impact when you're gone. You know, so if you're not making an impact when you're here, you know, on the field, in the meeting rooms, and things like that, that when you're gone, you, you won't be missed, you know. So um, that's one of those things that the, the reality sometimes, the focus of what we're doing and how you do it is everybody's watching. Cause like I said, we're such a young team. We got young players that are coming here thinking they can play and they want to take somebody's job. And, and the competition of that is, is going to be, we're hoping going to be uh, another, another thing that drives this team for success. So uh, that's, that's kind of where we are. Well, the Bison are getting ready for the 2018 run of their second-year coach, Mike London, and we'll be right there each and every week giving our recaps of Bison Nation as they head toward the Celebration Bowl. Let the games begin September 1st as Bison Nation will take on. Practices are starting, and we'll be along the journey to keep you abreast of what's going on. Coach, as always, we want to thank you so much for making yourself available. He is Coach Mike London. I am the radio guy, the doctor, Mike Prince. Remember to follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. The website is obnradio.com. And until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.